Hello, I'm Roseanne de Torres. I'm the managing partner of the Torres and de George Family Law. And this video is another in our series showing our clients how we provide them with 360 degrees of care. Here at de Torres and de George Family Law, we know that divorce and family law clients often need more than just legal advice. And that's why we partner with different professionals that can guide you and offer you services that can assist you in your journey through the legal process and beyond. Today, I have with me Leslie Allen of West End Residential. Welcome, Leslie. Hi, Roseanne, how are you? I'm doing great today. Please tell us a little bit about you and what you do. So I work at West End Residential. I'm one of their realtors there and Full disclosure, I am a survivor of divorce, so I speak from experience providing full service real estate service for my clients. And, you know, when you're getting a divorce, there are a lot of moving parts and having a qualified residential realtor um, at your disposal is important. Yeah, great. So that's a great segue because that's what I want to talk to you about today is how working with a realtor such as yourself can help people that are going through divorce and are in transition. And one of the things that you said to me, uh, well, you actually wrote in your blog that's on our website is how shifting the way that you think about your house can actually help you. Talk, to, talk a little bit about that. I think that's a really key point. And it just sort of helps you move on to the next step, right? Because you've lived in the house, you have great memories, or maybe you don't have so great memories there. But if you think of it as a product, something you're trying to sell, then it's not quite as painful. And then you'll be more receptive to hear the advice that a realtor may be giving you and ready to make your next move. Awesome. So the other thing you had said in your blog and you had given a couple of good tips about buying and selling. And one of the things you said was choose wisely. What did you mean by that? The same way that you need to do your due diligence about your attorney, you should do the same with your realtor. Because firstly, you want to have great communication. But more importantly, I pride myself in really being able to analyze the market so that I can give... Um, good advice to my clients on what they can expect when they're selling their home or when they have to buy a home. And you need to know it may take you six months to sell your home. It may take you 30 days. It may take you a year. That is all going to depend on the price point, where you are, and how you price something may depend on what you're trying to do. So you, one, want to make sure you have a rapport with um, your realtor because if you're selling sometimes it involves both parties and you all may not you all may not be speaking but the realtor speaks to both and um, when you're getting any kind of agreement that the attorney is writing up they may tell you well if we'll reduce the price in 90 days but if you, as a realtor I'm telling you if in two weeks you haven't gotten an offer you need to reduce the price 90 days is really going to hurt you in the long run. So you want to make sure you have the most up-to-date analysis. So that's why you really have to choose your realtor wisely, who can really tell you and teach you what is going on. So what I hear you saying is that the realtor can often work with your divorce attorney so that any settlement agreement takes into account those market conditions that are going to affect your decisions to buy or sell. And you want to make sure that those, that your uh, process for buying or selling matches what's in the settlement agreement. Absolutely. Because you don't want, I mean, okay, when you're getting a divorce, you, there's so many things going on that you're trying to manage. So you, but the real estate component is important and you want to make sure that you're not signing up for something that's going to shoot you in the foot. So that's why your attorney needs to know what is going on specifically with what your property um, brings to the table in terms of its value. Um, because you may sign something and then it comes back and hurts you because had your attorney looked at the market, they would know, don't ever say this is going to sell in six months because it takes two years to sell a million plus home or, you know, that kind of a thing. So it's important. You have to have to choose wisely. Yeah. And they have to work cooperatively. 
So it's, it, yeah. yeah, talk it's to not, us a little it's bit not about, about uh, you know, you, you can, I find in real estate, you cannot operate in a silo, right? Mm -hmm. That all of the different moving parts have to be able to connect to one another and um, have good communication. So when I'm dealing with a divorcing client, I'm not getting in the weeds about um, the divorce. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm just going to make sure or ask my client the question, is your attorney aware of the market research or my market analysis? And you want to make sure your attorney is, is um, receptive to it. Strategically, as an attorney, you may decide you need to do X, Y, Z. Um, but I just want to make sure you're basing that on the market analysis and the needs of the client. Sometimes you have to sell your home at a fire sale price, right? Mm -hmm. um, even though the market says X could happen. So it's all about collaboration. There are a lot of moving parts. And you want to make sure each person in your process has good communication with you and that they're connected to one another only in the fields that they're experts on to make sure you can then make the most informed decision. Talk to us a little bit about pricing and, and, and setting prices for people that are selling and making sure you offer the best price if you're buying. So if you are selling your home, there, there are several things that come into play. Obviously the market analysis, um, the inventory that's on the market, what is your ultimate goal? Do you have one year to sell your house? Or are you trying to sell it in six months? Are you trying to buy something else and it's contingent upon it, upon it? But the market tells you what your price, what your house is worth. Even if back in the boom you heard let's say your house was worth a million dollars. And even if you think you're gonna have the strategy, let's try high and then we'll drop it down. The most important thing if you are trying to sell your home is to price it accurately, right? And my strategy is always to price something a little bit under the market value because I'll get the most eyes on it and have a wider opportunity for you to actually sell your home. I can't guarantee you're gonna get multiple offers, but the strategy to say, well, let's price it high, and then if it doesn't sell in two weeks, this is what happens. If your house isn't getting a lot of looks because people think it's priced high, then it's sort of what's called a stale listing, and oh, something must be wrong, that house didn't really sell that quickly. And when you start to reduce your price, you're gonna actually reduce it and statistically probably sell it at a lower price than if you would listen to the realtor and priced it just below the market or at market value. So pricing is really, really key. And here's the other thing when you're getting a divorce, even if you're not ready, you need to move on to your next spot, your next place, your next phase in life, okay? And so if you're holding on for that number and still churning around in the old house, in the old house, in the old house, you're not making progress. So sometimes it's worth it to price it, sell it, move on. Because starting your new life is worth so much more to you. It really, really is. Yeah, and you mentioned that in your blog about being open to a variety of options. And, and sometimes uh, our clients have a, a one view of how they want their future to look. But you have some good points about broadening horizons and being open to different possibilities. You know, a lot of times clients, even if they're not divorcing, they come in with a must have and a very small list. I must have this house in this neighborhood, two car garage, finished basement, blah, 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 blah. And they end up somewhere else without a basement and something totally different. So that happens automatically in real estate. So I always say, let's throw the net wide. Think about possibilities, be open to it. You're gonna know and have a sense once you start shopping around whether or not that can work for you. But if you keep yourself really small in a tight little bubble, you're gonna miss out on a lot of opportunities. I mean, I would be the perfect example. I lived in New York much of my adult life and um, New Jersey was a place you pass through, so I thought, <laughs> you know, and I was, you know, the New York snob, right? 
And when I came to New Jersey, I was like, wow, okay, this is where I should be. This is where I love. And so I encourage you and clients to let, you know, push the envelope, look outside, um, wherever you land, it's going to be okay. So broaden your horizon because great things can happen. I love it here. Okay. I wouldn't live really anywhere else. Um, and you know, you have to drag me to go back to New York city for any <laughs> reason. <laughs> so. Well, Leslie, thank you so much for your time today. Please tell our listeners how they can find you and how to contact you. Very simply, text is best, or I'm old school, you can call me on my phone. And my number, 646-824-4646. Yes, that's a New York City exchange. I kept that. That's the only New York thing I kept. 646-824-4646. We are West and residential.com so between those two things and my email really simple leslie at westinresidential.com if you have any questions real estate related i can help you and the one thing that i would say is you will survive and the more information you have on the front side the better it will be thank you again leslie you're quite welcome